Hi guys, Andrew Davidson here, and welcome back to another As Per My Ability video. Now today's video is going to be just completely laid back. It is an absolutely gorgeous day here. I have the window open, so you will probably catch some sounds from outside. There are some birds outside right now. My cats are with me. They're running amok, so they will be around. I got the yellow shades on. This is just going to be a really off-the-cuff video, and kind of more of a teaching video or a preaching slash teaching video. And so in today's video, I'm just going to go real slow and real laid back and talk about On the Morals of Chess by Benjamin Franklin. So what I've done is, is I have my tablet here with me. I have basically surmised the essay into four main bullet points that I will be talking about and just riffing about and that's what the video is going to be today now for those of you that don't know benjamin franklin is one of the founding fathers of america he is on the 100 dollars bill um, he's highly well known in american history he also wrote an essay called on the morals of chess now he's talking about chess obviously the two-player abstract strategy game but I noticed a lot of the things that he said in here are basically just about games. And so I wanted to kind of expose my audience to this essay that he wrote. Now, I can probably provide a link somewhere for you if you want to go read the whole thing. But this video is going to be me with my tablet. And I'm just going to be talking about the four main parts that he talks about in the body of his essay. So when we talk about games, when we talk about the morals of chess, we're not talking necessarily morals about what's right, what's wrong, what's good, and what's bad. We're just talking about you as a person gaining things here inside your soul, inside your heart, inside your spirit, whatever you want to call it. And so Benjamin Franklin was talking about chess and was talking about the importance that he saw when he saw people play chess, when he played chess himself. And he basically pulled these ideas, these bigger concepts from playing chess and basically said, these are some things that we as people need to learn by chess, you know, things that chess can teach us. So I'm going to go through the four bullet points and then I'll sign off. Um, like I said, it's just a really relaxed video. And so we'll start with number one. So the first one is under the title of foresight the ability to plan ahead with wisdom and insight now of course for anyone that's played a game especially a really strategic game you always know that you have foresight it's something that may not be at the forefront of your brain it might be subconsciously but i think everyone that sits down to play a game especially a game that they've played before where they're not having to worry about learning the rules and not making mistakes or things they always are approaching it with foresight, prudency, thinking of the future, um, planning ahead with wisdom and insight, knowing what strategies are available, what moves can I make, what cards dictate what I'm going to do on my first turn. It allows you to get that part of your brain going, to look forward, to approach something with calculation, to make informed strategic choices for the next two hours of your life, however long the game takes. And that's something that we do every day when our two feet hit the floor, when we wake up. We make these strategic choices, these uh, wisdom and insight. We use these things every day to make choices as how we are going to play this game that we are all in. And so a game may be very frivolous, it might be just pieces on a, you know, you might be saying just pieces on a board, it's on a, or on a tabletop, but in order to really learn to tackle a situation, to look at it and have a sense of prudency about it, is a way that we need to approach every single day. And by doing this in games, it builds upon those characteristics of waking up in the morning and having that that wisdom, that insight, how am I going to handle the challenges that I'm going to have today at work, 
with my spouse, going to school. Some of these challenges come out of nowhere and they're surprises. Car accidents happen. They call them accidents for a reason. Some challenges you know about though. They may be challenges in your life internally. They may be challenges externally, having a tough time dealing with a coworker, um, things like that. But by playing games, we can get that sense of, you know, work that muscle in your brain of approaching things with insight, with wisdom, not just going off the cuff, not just making things without any wisdom, but making calculated choices about how I want this to reflect in my future. Because those turns that I take in the game, they're going to reflect how the rest of my game goes. And those movements that you make in real life and those choices that you make in real life, they're going to affect how your life moves forward, either with that coworker, with your significant other, with your child, with a situation at work. And you always need to sit and always think that game, or sorry, life is a game and it's a strategic game and it's played with other players. And not every single player is the same, of course. So let's move on to number two. Number two is circumspection. The quality of being able to take a wide variety of circumstances and situations into account and judge accordingly. Survey the board. Survey the player next to you. I was recently in a game where I was looking around and I was looking at all the different player maps thinking, hmm, I think I might have this objective. I do that on purpose. We do that on purpose. Why well, I know, again, it's because we want to win a game. But when you are talking about life, you talk about choices that you make that you need to survey. Going to college, what school is good for me? What do I major in? What kind of career do, should I have? Where should I move to start a family? Or should I start a family? You are going to take in a wide variety of circumstances and situations, and you're gonna take them into account and judge them accordingly. Basically, layman's terms, like a pros and cons. What if I do this? What, is, what are the ups and downs? What if I do this? What are the ups and downs? That's gonna inform me as to how my life is gonna go or how the game is going to turn for me. Because if I don't, if I don't look over at Sally's player mat, I'm going to make dumb, for the lack of a better term, decisions, uninformed decisions. And when you make uninformed decisions, you really cause chaos in your life. And same in a game. If you make uninformed decisions, you are going to fall behind. You are going to make mistakes. You are going to make turns that should count, that should matter, not matter anymore. And in life, you are going to make actions and de uh, decisions and choices that are not going to end up mattering. You are going to waste your resources in games and in life. And when I say resources, I mean time, money, emotional uh, energy, spiritual energy, anything like that. Number three says, caution. Knowing the consequences which could result from bad choices and seeking avoidance of these at all cost. Wow, very, very self-explanatory. Choices, caution, knowing when to go, when not to go. There's a whole song about knowing when to hold them, when to fold them. That's all about a card game. And in life, it's the same way. It's about the consequences that they could result from bad uh, choices and you need to seek to avoid those at all costs. So in a game, you would have caution sometimes and you would think things through again with that insight and wisdom, knowing when to go and when to stay because it could affect the game board, it could affect your points, it could affect a lot of different things depending on the way that you're playing, especially like in a social deduction game. In life, it's the same way. We learn these things through playing games. We learn caution. We learn when to move. We learn the ROI, the return on investment. We learn the risk rewards. But we also have to learn the caution. Learn when to play conservatively. 
when to let other people make their decisions to make our informed strategic decision. When your enemies make mistakes, don't interrupt them. And I always like to say, when other players are making mistakes, don't interrupt them either. I know that sounds kind of crass. That's probably about 90% sarcasm, but I do like that saying. On to number four, and I'm going to read uh, the whole thing instead of just surmising it. And lastly, we learn by chess the habit of not being discouraged by present bad appearances in the state of our affairs. The habit of hoping for a favorable change and that of persevering in the search of resources. The game is so full of events, there is such a variety of turns in it. The fortune of it is, is so subject to sudden vicissitudes and one so frequently after long contemplation discovers the means of extricating oneself from supposed insurmountable difficulty that one is encouraged to continue the contest to last in hopes of victory by our own skill or at least of giving a stalemate by the negligence of our adversary. I really want to just leave the video with that. I wanted to hit one more thing that's right at the beginning. And lastly, we learn by games the habit of not being discouraged by present bad appearances. Things look bad. I'm last. I'm not winning. My engine is just not firing. But don't be discouraged. Don't let those things get you down. Because it's another, there's another game. There's another day. There's another opportunity. Every day offers more moments and every moment is another chance to turn it around. And that is true in games and that is absolutely true in life. And so don't be discouraged by present bad appearances. In the state of your affairs, develop the habit of hoping for favorable change. Think, I can do this. If not, I can try. I may not be able to win this game, but I can get whatever points I can get to try to do better than I did last time or just feel like, you know what, I did my best. And the best is all you have sometimes. And the persevering in this search of resources, and the persevering in the source of more knowledge, more experiences is what I would probably say. New games, another chance, another relationship, another moment with a friend another moment with a coworker, another chance to take your child and to earn their respect because you made a mistake or you said something you shouldn't have done or you disappointed them. And so don't feel bad in your current situation. Look forward ahead with wisdom and insight. Always be persevering in the hope of more experiences and more knowledge. Because, as I've said before, the unexamined life is not worth living. And if you don't examine these things, if you're not thinking forward, if you're not doing these things that Benjamin Franklin says that chess really adapts people to learn to do these in their real life, then you haven't really examined your life because you're just complete chaos. You're not making informed decisions. You're not, like, persevering despite bad influence or by, sorry despite bad situations and those are very very valuable lessons and i've talked with people before about i like to do videos where i talk about real life discussions with board games as kind of the background or as or as kind of the the base layer and people just go you like monopoly you know like board games and i kind of get the look of like yeah, okay, whatever floats your boat, that seems kind of crazy. But you know what? It's not that crazy. Games do tell us something about ourselves. And playing enough games can build something in ourselves. I am not the same person that I was 11 years ago or 10 years ago because of games. Because I've gone through enough bad, negative, sad experiences, complete blowouts, totally getting, you know, getting lost in a game or losing a game. And I don't approach those situations the same the second time, or the third time, or the fourth time. And I feel myself growing as a person. So you may say, ah, it seems like a weird thing for a YouTube video. 
but Benjamin Franklin didn't. Benjamin Franklin, a founding father, looked at a game called chess and said, there's something here. There's something that can really help people strengthen themselves, their inner self, spiritually, emotionally, and most importantly, up here. Training your brain to go, God, I really am sucking at this game. My engine is just not doing what I need in this game, but I'm going to try. Because I don't quit, and it's not going to be probably the best outcome, but I'm going to hope for a good outcome. I'm going to try. I'm going to persevere. And you know what? At the end, I'm going to smile and go, next game. Thanks, everyone, for watching. I'm Andrew Davidson, and I will see you guys all at the next video.